January 2nd, 2020. Got a little colder this morning. Temperature inside the trailer said it was five below zero. Clear, gorgeous sky. Maybe we'll see some northern lights this morning. Just got off of work, it's 12.24 in the afternoon and my temperature gauge says it's minus one, but uh, all the other thermometers say it's eight below zero right now. And when I was talking to you the other day, I was talking about in the last video, how you know you don't leave water and stuff in your truck, you just make sure you always bring it in with you. So, you know, I got off of work and brought myself in a bottle of water. But when I looked over <laughs> in my passenger seat, there's the bottle of water that I actually had in the truck and I forgot to take it with me this morning when I walked in. Anyway, uh, this video is about my long day. Uh, it's spitting snow right now. So my, my day started this morning at 2.30 a.m. when I woke up. Made up some coffee, drove to work. You saw that little video when I got in the truck and started everything up. Uh, now, like I said, it's 12.24, 12.25, almost about 12.30 in the afternoon. And I'm gonna head home. Um, get some stuff done real quick catch a quick power nap for about two hours and then I gotta head into the radio station which is uh, something that I do I'm a volunteer DJ at our local uh, public radio station kdll.org kdll.org 91.9 FM in Soldata or in Kenai is where the station's at but it's for Kenai and Soldata but uh, yeah it's my long day I figured I'd just take you along with me this video when I'm done is probably not gonna be more than 10 minutes I am gonna do the drive when I go from my house to Kenai um, but you won't actually hear any talking during most of that and I'll just speed right through it just so you can see what uh, What it looks like in that area. It's really really pretty. That's it I'm gonna let this truck warm up while I eat me some chicken. I picked up some baked chicken at work for lunch <laughs> Guy sitting over there with bundles of firewood God help him. God bless him You're buying firewood at this time of the year and it's eight below zero I don't know how the heck you're going to stay warm. I went out and bought another buddy heater because my first one that I owned took a dump after six years. Six years of serious use in the winter um, because I used that thing inside to keep the trailer warm. Headlights on. Truck's eh. Semi-warm it up. Let's go. One thing I will say before we hit the road up here, so this is the Sterling Highway that we're turning it on to. It's like the main road. It goes, from, if, if you make a left here and follow it all the way up to the Seward Highway and turn left again, you'll end up at Anchorage. So whenever, whenever anybody wants to know how to get to Anchorage, I just say, uh, yeah, turn left, and then when the road dead ends, turn left again. But talking about cold and cold weather and cold weather driving, what it does to your vehicle. So up here, all the oils are synthetic, uh, especially in the interior or multi-viscosity stuff because it just gets so, so cold in the winter. Um, and the interior gets, like I said, brutally cold uh, with some minus 60 below temperatures and I think a minus 72 below temperature um, just last week. And it's funny because when you park your vehicle, it doesn't matter if you're plugged in or not, um, it's cold. And so the rubber in the tires actually, you'll get a flat spot in your tires. So until the car, or until you, your tires warm up as you're driving down the road, it's what we call Flintstone tires, because it's like thump, 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 thump. <laughs> Alrighty. Trustworthy hardware, they're on the right-hand side. That is the place to go for fishing gear. They, they have a ton of fishing gear in that little hardware store. Yeah. 
Park Saloon. They've been around for a long, long time. I think they were around before statehood. And here is the world famous Kenai River. And I'm not kidding when I say it's world famous. There are some of the greatest epic sockeye red or sockeye salmon runs that you will ever see here in this river. We'll take a walk through there in uh, a future video. Get down there and hike on that on the path that they have down there. All right. So if you keep following this road all the way down, it'll eventually end in Homer at Land's End. But we're turning left because we are headed back to Funny River. With that said, I'm going to listen to my audiobook and we're going to fast forward through pretty much the rest of the drive. Bluetooth audio. Bluetooth audio. Slow down here and I'm going to show you guys something that is just freaking awesome and it's one of the reasons why I live here. You can see them up in the left hand corner of the screen right now. And it's so awesome because, you know, they're courtesy enough, courteous enough to do this right where there's a pull out. Don't know if I can zoom with this. Let's see what we can do. Two bald eagles. There you go, huh? Two bald eagles right there in the tree. I think they're a mating pair because they are always there. Bald eagle does not get a white head until it becomes five years old. So um, you can tell they're older than five years old by the by the white head. Let's hit it. came by and plowed today, awesome.
temperature on the truck says six degrees below zero. All right, I'm gonna catch a nap, do a couple of things in the house first, then catch a nap, and then we will do this all over again. The drive-in is, is pretty awesome too because the views are just beautiful. Uh, we'll head into the radio station here. Usually I leave around 4.30 in the afternoon and it's right around sunset. Twilight, sunset. <clears throat> it's about 5 p.m. Got my bag of goodies. All right, uh, you ready? The camera actually makes it look a lot brighter than it really is. So here's the game plan. I have to stop off and get gas. I have to stop off and get go juice at the local coffee place and uh, head right over to the radio station from there, get everything set up and do all my prep for my show. And then we will be on the air. Ooh, shoot, you know what? I need this run and the dog runs up to the yard here. I forgot something. Be right back. The dog you saw run up in the driveway is actually the neighbor's dog, and she's always outside. And even though it's seven below zero, she is an Alaska dog, so she's Malamute. And uh, if you ever pet her, her fur is just so thick, it's crazy. All right, here we go. We're off to Kenai. Nice plow has not through yet. We'll be right back. All right, go to your truck. She'd be full, 25 gallons. Usually fill up once a week. There, pour it down a little bit. Twice a week if I'm gonna go on any trips. Got lucky, only had to pay 252 a gallon with my grocery store discount. Pretty freaking cool. Uh-oh, the popo. We got go juice for the truck, now we need go juice for the driver. That little stand right across the street. Alaska probably has more coffee stands per capita than any other state in the union. Building right over there is a yurt. It's the yoga yurt.
can't get my fingers to work. Thank you. Have a great night. All right, we got go juice for the truck and we have go juice for the driver. Speaking of coffee, what's your favorite coffee? What do you guys like to drink out there? What do you buy from the grocery store? Let me know in the comments below. Are you a regular old UBAM Maximum House Folders customer? Or are you the upscale Death Wish? Up here I like the uh, Alaska Artisan Coffee Company. Um, they do uh, black satin dark roast that is just friggin' awesome. And Arctic Wolf Dark Roast, which is the one I usually drink most of the time. Been thinking about trying Black, Ri uh, black Rifle Coffee. Everybody I've talked to who's tried it uh, really, really enjoys it. And the price is ungodly cheap compared to what I pay in the grocery store for coffee up here. And they'll ship it right to my house. <clears throat> oh, that's a good coffee. have arrived. You have reached your destination. Ding! <laughs> oh. And we're here five minutes early. 5.55. Oh my gosh. I'll tell you what. Long darn days. Long darn days. room at KDLL. All right. So why do I do volunteer radio? Well, it's it's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty cool, really. I always wanted to be a disc jockey. I always wanted to do something on the radio. I thought it would be the coolest thing in the world that I could do. Um, and nobody would ever hire me or give me a job to do it. So then I started my own online radio station years ago, and it was, uh, what, what, it was IRFT, Internet Radio from Tuolumne. Celtic music with a twist. So it was all Celtic music, um, but it wasn't your mom and dad's Celtic music. I would play, you know, the Irish Rovers and the Chieftains and some of that stuff in there, but I would have an hour on one night a week that was dedicated to nothing but Irish in Irish, an hour one night every week that was dedicated to Scottish in Scottish, Welsh in Welsh. Um, and I had artists from all over the world sending me music, and it was really cool. But when I moved to Alaska, I lost my bandwidth. Just, let me spin this around real quick so I can talk to you. So when I moved to Alaska, I lost my bandwidth and I could no longer do the station um, because it streamed straight from, from my computer and the server that I had set up um, over the internet. And, and I could handle, I mean, it was through a repeater service, so I could handle up to 500 consecutive listeners, but my bandwidth was too small to be able to stream the show without interruption. So that's when I went to podcasts. Well, the, the hosts of the Thursday night show decided they were done. They'd been doing it for years, and they just they wanted to take a break and focus on life and everything else. So they stepped down, 
and they announced it on KDLL's Facebook page. And, and I am a member of KDLL because I love public broadcasting. I think pro public broadcasting is awesome. If you listen to it, you're going to hear songs that are five, six, seven, eight minutes long. You're going to hear songs you would never hear on, on terrestrial radio, on regular commercial radio. Anyway, when they stepped down, um, I sent an email to the station manager, Jenny Nyman, and said, hey, Jenny, I would love to do a show. We exchanged a few emails. She asked what I wanted to do, back and forth, back and forth, and uh, set me up with basically my own show. Um, so my trainers were Sal Cassano, and Sal has a show on Saturday nights, Dead Musicians. So the only qualification to be on her show is the musicians have to be dead or somebody in the band had to have died. Um, and, and one time she, she was telling me she even played a song by one band that was super famous. I forget who it was, but nobody in the band was dead, but their bus driver, who was a backup drummer, uh, died so she could use them. <laughs> and then the other one was Sharon Red Baron uh, for uh, Red Baron Country on Tuesday nights, which was a blast. So I got to sit in with those guys. And my first actual show um, was on Thursday night, Thanksgiving night. It was very cool. It was a blast. So that's why I do public radio. Um, this is, I started this Thanksgiving in 2019. This is my sixth show, maybe, fifth or sixth show. Um, and it's a ton of fun. So if you've got nothing to do, check it out, kdll.org, kdll.org. Thursday nights, 7 to 9 p.m. And uh, this is the end of my long day. I mean, I'll be in here playing on the radio. I'll set up the camera on the cell phone. I did bring my little tripod thing in there. Uh, I'll set up the camera on the cell phone and... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll record myself while I'm doing some different stuff, maybe the first couple of minutes of the show, um, just to give you an idea of what, it, what I do. But it's fun. It is so much fun. Um, and I do it every Thursday night. It's a blast. All right, that's it. Uh, I'm going to get busy here because looking at the clock, let me spin a camera back around here. Looking at the clock, we're getting close. Do, 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 do. I got eight minutes until my show goes live. Live from... Kenai, Alaska. <laughs> ton of fun. All right, I'm going to get off the phone here. Get off the camera anyway. Um, and get this thing rolling. This is KDLL Kenai Sobratna. Folks, my name is Sean Owens. This is Modern Folk and Roots on listener-supported public radio for the Central Kenai Peninsula, KDLL 91.9 FM, Kenai and Soldatna. How you guys doing? How is everybody doing out there? How's your new year doing so far? I mean, it's brand new. It just started two days into it. We have 363 more days to start everything brand new. Again. I mean, that's cool. New Year's, to me, is just a a fun, fun time, and it's nothing but possibilities, nothing but things that you can achieve in the next year. If you want to give me a call tonight while the music is playing, the phone number here is 283-8414. Feel free to do so. We're going to jump right into the music with the man himself out of Ireland, Christy Moore, probably one of the greatest balladeers and folk singers that Ireland has ever produced. The guy's got a great voice, too. Here is Christy Moore on KDLL. I dreamed the dream the other night, I couldn't sleep a wink. The rats were trying to tell me the sheep. I was off the track. There was footsteps in the park. That's it. That's how I started. <laughs> I was carrying up the lawn, moving all the chairs. I looked out for one in the blanket, up at the fire bed. There you have it. Off the air at 9 o'clock and back in my driveway and ready for bed because I am beat at 9.57. It's 13 degrees below zero. That is a typical long Thursday for me in Alaska. Uh, but I love it. It's a blast. I had a ton of fun. A bunch of people on Facebook tonight um, shooting off requests and comments and listening from all over the world. Uh, the eastern coast of the United States, Australia. I had people from all over the place. It was great. That'll do it for me. I'm tired. 
but I'm also Sean in Alaska. Have a great day.